Hi there, and welcome to The Daily Gardener, a podcast about gardening, botanical history, and literature. I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling, and today is May 24th, and there are just 27 days until the first day of summer. Today, we celebrate an American woman who loved plants, wrote memorable verses that have stood the test of time, and became the godmother of Thanksgiving. We'll also learn about a modern writer and Pulitzer Prize winner who writes in a garden shed. We'll hear a memorable excerpt about killing slugs. And we grow that garden library today with an inspiring book about marvelous plant combinations. And then we'll wrap things up with a fun story about a gardener remembered in a rock and roll hit from 1968. But first, here's today's Curated News. Today's Curated News comes to us from Our Crafty Mom. This is a fun little post that was written by Michelle. She's a crafter, a DIYer, and a lover of all things home, including easy recipes. And in this post, she shares what she calls the best mosquito repellent mason jar hack with essential oils. Now, what caught my attention is that I saw the picture of this adorable mason jar that's filled with herbs and different cuttings from the garden. And Michelle starts out her post this way. She says, looking forward to summer barbecue and cookout season, but dreading the pesky mosquitoes? This mosquito repellent mason jar hack is just what you need. It uses essential oils as a natural repellent, and it's so easy to make. And I think it's so pretty. Now, the other thing I want to mention is that in this post, Michelle is using essential oils from Simply Earth, and there is absolutely nothing wrong with those essential oils, but there's also nothing wrong with using another brand's essential oils. So don't feel like you have to follow this exactly. You can certainly use whatever essential oils you have on hand from whatever your favorite brand is for essential oils. But let me tell you really quickly what goes into this mason jar so that you can understand how Michelle puts this together. And bear in mind that mosquitoes do not like citrus. A lot of insects do not care for the citrus scent. And so it's an excellent repellent. So what you'll find in this mason jar are cut up lemons, cut up limes, basil, rosemary, and or tree clippings. That makes it very pretty. There's a little tea candle that floats on top of all of this. And of course, then there's also the essential oils. And in this instance, Michelle is choosing essential oils that come from citrus. So she added grapefruit and then lemon eucalyptus. And that lemon eucalyptus is apparently the active ingredient that's recommended by the CDC as a natural bug repellent. So she puts all of this together in an adorable little mason jar, which gets filled to the top with water. And then you put a little tea light candle on top that you let float and then you can light it. And it really is a very cute little mason jar. It would be fun to have on a table if you're having some type of outdoor gathering in your garden. You might just find that you're very inspired to do something like this for yourself. Now, of course, you can find this post along with this cute little image in the Facebook group for the show. If you need to get to it quickly, just head on up to the top underneath the header, use the magnifying glass, type in the word Mason for Mason Jar, and this post will pop right up. And if you're not in the Facebook group, please come on over and join us. I'd love for you to be able to see all of the curated articles that I'm gathering for you. And also, I would love to get to know you and see your garden. So if you'd like to join the group, all you need to do is the next time you're on Facebook, just search for the words Daily Gardener Community, where you'd search for a friend and then request to join. There'll be a handful of questions that you'll need to answer. And then once you do that, 
I will admit you into the group and then you too can share your garden, search for articles, share your passion for the garden with other listeners of the show. And as I promised on Friday, I want to make sure that I continue to welcome our new members over this past month. So I got about halfway through that list on Friday, and I'm going to continue with welcoming new members right now. Let's welcome Jody Noyce, Jean Valdez, KJ's Klein, Courtney Dunn, Lori Eisenstadt. She's a fellow podcaster and a friend, and she actually has a podcast that's called All About Breastfeeding, and it's fantastic. So if you know somebody who is breastfeeding and needs a good podcast for that, you should check out Lori's show. Also want to welcome Barbara Meekin, Diane Chandler, Susan Thomas, Sarah Lee Etter, Christine Patricia, Carrie Tillett, Wendy Jackson, Carla Sterrett, L.T. Marie Karras, Toby Howell, Susan Paith, Vera Giraudi, Carolyn Hockenbury, Michelle Yancey O'Brien, Kath Thompson, Molly Shipman, and Rosie Cubbin. Welcome, you guys. I look forward to meeting you and learning all about your gardens. All right, it's time for today's botanical history. Here's botanical history for today, May 24th. It was on this day, May 24th, in 1830, that Mary Had a Little Lamb by Sarah Josepha Hale is published by the Boston firm Marsh, Capon, and Lyon. Born in New Hampshire in 1788, Sarah was homeschooled and she attributed all of her learning and success to her mother. She wrote, I owe my early predilection for literary pursuits to the teaching and example of my mother. She had enjoyed uncommon advantages of education for a female of her times and possessed a mind clear as rock water and had a most happy talent of communicating knowledge. In 1848, Sarah married David Hale. He encouraged Sarah's intellectual endeavors, and together they enjoyed reading and study. Their idyllic life together was cut short when David died of a stroke after just nine years of marriage. Sarah gave birth to their fifth child two weeks after David died, and she began writing to support herself and her five children, all under the age of seven. So think about that the next time you hear the nursery rhyme, Mary Had a Little Lamb. In 1835, Sarah wrote Spring Flowers, or The Poetical Bouquet, easy, pleasing, and moral rhymes and pieces of poetry for children. In the book, Sarah wrote, Mary had a little lamb, but she also wrote of Mary and her little pet bird, Dickie. It goes like this. In that gilded cage hung with chickweed and may, like a beautiful palace and garden so gay, perhaps you're not happy Perhaps you're not well. I wish you could speak that your griefs you might tell. It vexes me quite thus to see you in sorrow. Goodbye, and I hope you'll be better tomorrow. In 1856, Sarah wrote another book that focused on flowers, and it was called Flora's Interpreter, or The American Book of Flowers and Sentiments. This gift book featured poetry and flowers in an effort to raise American national sentiment. Sarah opened the book with this epigraph. A flower I love, not for itself, but that its name is linked with names I love, a talisman of hope and memory. By this point in her career, Sarah had established herself as a writer and editor, but also as the godmother of Thanksgiving. 
For 20 years, between 1847 and 1867, Sarah fought to make Thanksgiving a national holiday, a day that was celebrated on one day throughout the nation, and she wanted a certain day for that celebration, writing, the last Thursday in November has these advantages. Harvests of all kinds are gathered in. Summer travelers have returned to their homes. The diseases that, during the summer and early autumn, often afflict some portions of our country have ceased, and all are prepared to enjoy a day of thanksgiving. But Sarah's wish would not be granted until 62 years after her death, when Franklin Delano Roosevelt made Thanksgiving Day an official national holiday in 1941. In the year before she died, at the age of 90, Sarah poignantly wrote about her death in her very last column. She wrote, Growing old, growing old, do they say it of me? Do they hint my fine fancies are faded and fled? That my garden of life, like some winter-swept tree, is frozen and dying, or fallen and dead? Is the heart growing old when each beautiful thing, like a landscape at eve, looks more tenderly bright, and love sweeter seems as the bird's wandering wing draws nearer her nest at the coming of night. And today is the birthday of the American novelist and short story writer Michael Chabon, who was born on this day, May 24th, in 1963. In 2000, Michael wrote The Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay, which won the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction in 2001. Michael is married to the writer Ayelet Waldman, and together they have four children. They also have a writing studio, a little shingled shed in the garden in their backyard a place that writers like Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, Roald Dahl, George Bernard Shaw, Mark Twain, and Virginia Woolf all used and enjoyed. Michelle Slatella wrote about Michael's writing shed for Gardenista back in 2014. She wrote, After it was renovated by Berkeley design build firm Friedman Brugmeier, the studio became Michael's exclusive retreat and the subject of his 2001 essay, A Fortress of One's Own, in This Old House magazine. Ayelet said, We moved to that house when I had just started writing and I hadn't sold anything yet so I didn't think I deserved an office. Michael countered, then I had terrible repetitive stress injuries and arthritis in my pinky finger, so I got an office out of the house, but that was super lonesome. So Michael said to his wife, let's share. The studio has two separate but open work bays. Ayelet's desk sits beneath a bulletin board that she covered with color-coded note cards, while Michael writes in an Eames lounge and ottoman. He rocks when he works. Ayelet said, first he had a desk, but then he moved over to the Eames chair and that invalid swing arm laptop table he has now. It's exactly like a dentist setup. He battles carpal tunnel syndrome, and this setup works for now. Now, in his book, Summerland, Michael wrote about trees. He said, can you imagine an infinite tree? A tree whose roots snake down all the way to the bottomest bottom of everything. If you've ever looked at a tree, You've seen how its trunk divides into boughs, which divide yet again to branches, which divide into twigs, which divide again into twiglings. 
the whole mess splaying out in all directions, jutting and twisting and zigzagging. And at the tips of the tips, you might have a million tiny green shoots scattered like the sparks of an exploding skyrocket. It's time for today's Unearthed Words. Today's Unearthed Words come to us from P.G. Woodhouse, the English author and one of the most widely read humorists of the 20th century. This is an excerpt from his book, A Damsel in Distress. Hear him now as he toils. He has a long garden implement in his hand, and he is sending up the death rate in slug circles with a devastating rapidity. ta ra ra boom die, ta ra ra boom And the boom is a death knell as it rings softly out on the pleasant spring air. Another stout slug has made the great change. It's time to grow that garden library with today's book, Plant Combinations for an Abundant Garden by David Squire, Alan Bridgewater, and Jill Bridgewater. This book came out in 2019, and the subtitle is Design and Grow a Fabulous Flower and Vegetable Garden, Practical Advice, Step-by-Step Instructions, and a Comprehensive Plant Directory. This book features over 300 photographs, illustrations, and diagrams, and it's super easy to use. It shows how to create a productive garden by offering step-by-step instructions and pragmatic expert advice. This book covers everything from starting a plot and selecting plants to maximizing space and building raised beds. And the plant directory is comprehensive. It provides information on summer flowering annuals, herbaceous perennials, small trees and shrubs, climbers, water plants, and then your edibles, your herbs, fruits, and vegetables. Then in addition to the fantastic directory, there are also great instructions about modern day topics like how to build up layers of soil with mushroom compost, how to fight weeds by covering them with mulch, and how to protect your plants with nets and much more. This book is 240 pages of a gardening masterclass that's packed with tips and tools for all gardeners, whether you're a newbie or a seasoned pro. It offers way more than just the suggested combinations for flowers and veggies. You can get a copy of Plant Combinations for an Abundant Garden by David Squire, Alan Bridgewater, and Jill Bridgewater, and support the show by using the Amazon link in today's show notes for around $10. Finally, here's something sweet to revive the little botanic spark in your heart. It was on this day, May 24th, in 1968, that the Rolling Stones released their brand new song, Jumpin' Jack Flash. Keith Richards said that he and Mick Jagger wrote the song after staying at his house. One morning, they were awakened by Keith's gardener, Jack Dyer. Jager asked, what's that noise? And Richards replied, that's Jumpin' Jack. Thanks for listening to The Daily Gardener. And remember, for a happy, healthy life, garden every day. 
The Daily Gardener is produced in lovely Maple Grove in Wyoming, Minnesota. If you want to read today's show notes, just head on over to thedailygardener.org. And while you're there, be sure to sign up for my free Friday newsletter. And don't forget that you have a standing invitation to join the free Facebook group for listeners of the show. Just search for Daily Gardener Community the next time you're on Facebook and request to join. Last but not least, you can always get in touch by emailing me at jennifer at thedailygardener.org. I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling, and as always, have a great day in the garden, and we'll see you tomorrow.